Representation in the media is not something to be afraid of or resentful of. Unfortunately, some people cry out against diverse castes because instead of seeing those people as people, they're perceived as political statements. This simply dehumanizes those people. Representation is about accurately showing the same variety of people on screen as we have in real life. Doing this allows us to learn about the similarities and differences between us and how to respect one another. Recent Transformers media aims to include more diversity. There has been a rise in female robot characters, notably who are not love interests. Transformers IDW comics included three trans female robot characters, RC, Anode, and Lug, while very many romantic pairings among the robots were homoromantic. In the most recent show, Transformers Earthspark, the main human cast is black and Filipino. In addition to this, the mother has a prosthetic leg, and one of the robot characters is the first non-binary they using robot in Transformers history. Race, gender, and LGBTQ plus representation are often referred to when we are judging how diverse a cast is. Today we want to focus on the representation of a very under-discussed minority, the involuntarily mute. There will be a brief mention of deaf and blind representations as well. You will see that definitions of mute include people who choose not to speak. In real life, there are people who are incapable of speech. It is not by choice. Quite often, the silent characters in the media are just silent because they wish to be, and the audience is encouraged to find that super badass. However, to be involuntarily silent in real life is a challenging experience. Do we ever really see good mute representation in Transformers? Or is it all about romanticizing silence as a badass trait? I am joined by my friend who is mute and communicates through text and American Sign Language. We'll judge the characters you might think of right away when you try to think of mute characters in Transformers, and we'll discuss who is the best representation so far. We're all thinking of him now. Transformers Prime Soundwave is fully capable of speech, he just chooses not to speak. Starscream. You would do well to take a cue from Soundwave on occasion, and keep things to yourself. Vow of silence. Such a cop-out. Soundwave thus practiced other forms of communication to express himself, such as showing visuals on his face or playing audio lines of other characters. Increase global surveillance. Quit groveling and await my command. However, Soundwave does speak in the show, and when he does, it is portrayed as a big epic moment. But Soundwave doesn't speak, does he? Soundwave superior, Autobots inferior. In the show Robots in the Skies 2015, he only stays silent for one episode before dropping his vow for no apparent reason and speaking all he likes. Nuclear fusion rate fuel rods confirmed. This is a transgalactic beacon generator devised from wreckage recovered in the Shadow Zone. Silent spies and silent warriors are what I believe to be the most common kinds of mute characters we see in TV or in books. We also seem to have this with Transformer Cyberverse's Bludgeon. He comes across as a devoted cold warrior and killer. Perhaps he is an involuntarily mute character, but the nature of his silence is not revealed. He does not show a lived experience of mute people or provide education to a speaking audience. Seen any of my seekers? Bludgeon. Don't know why I even bother. We get the impression that everyone out there can speak and that not speaking is a choice. This is how involuntarily mute people are overlooked to the point that they might not be believed to be real, except when someone receives a throat injury. And speaking of throat injury, this brings us now to the Bumblebees of Transformers Prime, Cyberverse, and the live-action movies. Bumblebee in Transformers Prime is a character who cannot form words because Megatron damaged his voice box. However, Ratchet put a device in his throat that produces beeping noises, and these beeping noises form a language. 
Not now. Uh, someday. Warrior. Yeah, <laughs> you and me both. I assume that it is similar to how Silbo is a form of communication that uses whistles to codify Spanish. The beeps may be letters in Cybertronian. The reason why we didn't think Bumblebee was a good representation of mute people is because Bumblebee audibly communicates everything he needs to say. It's like he is speaking, but just humans don't understand, aside from Raph. He has entire conversations with his team at full speed and volume, and even Starscream can understand him. Oh, you'll what? Shoot! A cybonic plague? Someone besides myself is... is unwell? Bumblebee is different, but he isn't like real-life mute people. Especially when he is just magically cured and talks anyway at the end of the show. You took my voice. You will never rob anyone of anything ever again. When it comes to injuries, the audience roots for the character to be healed to how they were before. It's alright to wish for someone's recovery after a painful experience. But it is also okay to teach the audience about acceptance. Not everyone recovers. Some injuries and newly acquired disabilities stay with someone for life. There's a special meaning in learning to love oneself and to cope despite the difficulties. Bumblebee isn't a good representation of mute people, but he doesn't have to be. It might not have been intended to make Bumblebee represent that group of people. We're just saying, don't take him as an example of a mute character. Also, Bumblebee's grief wasn't that he could not communicate, because it was pointed out that everyone understands him fine. You know, like the way you own that voice box ratchet slapped in your throat? I mean, you know, everyone understands you fine. Why would you even consider getting it fixed now, all right? Bee's kind of still attached to the sound of his own voice, his original one. When it comes to the movies, a similar thing happens where Bumblebee's voice is replaced with another form of audible communication. Bumblebee learns to manipulate radio channels to clip out words and phrases to express everything he feels and wants to say. He's able to do this in real time and erase all previous struggles to communicate. Young fella, you are the person I care about most in my life. If there's anything you need, I won't be far away. The same happens with Transformers Cyberverse Bumblebee, but with TV clips. Where are the others? That's a great question! And the answer is... Hey! What is this? It's a hole in the ground. I wanna go in! <sighs> B, we're not going in that hole. But in the same style as Transformers Prime, Bumblebee regains his ability to speak later on. Let me see that. Is that... Iacon City? Permission to speak, sir. I wish to stay with the boy. Uh, I am Bumblebee, your oldest friend. Optimus, I would lay down my life for you. Here's the result of every case. The world of speaking people does not have to adapt to accommodate the mute characters. In the end, the mute characters get their voices back or manage to communicate audibly at a fast speed. There are no lessons of patience or dabbling in other forms of communication. The mute characters get their voices back, and the audience is meant to celebrate those moments. For good representation, what we're looking for is the experience of how mute people navigate life in a predominantly speaking world. This world is one that assumes you too can speak, so strongly so that when you don't speak, you're judged for it and waved off as a rude person. It is a world too impatient for you to type what you need to say, and it's a world where hardly anyone can understand you in sign language because the knowledge of visual languages is not widespread. These difficulties overlap with what the deaf community can feel too. However, I cannot think of a single deaf transformer. 
I cannot think of a blind one either because though you may cry out Kaon from IDW as an example, James Roberts claimed that Kaon sees through echolocation. That was how he was able to know that someone had a blade to his pet's throat. Humans don't echolocate, so Kaon isn't representing a blind experience. The way Kaon is written has him as no different than any of the seeing bots. The whole time I read the comics, it seemed like Kaon could see despite not having eyes. And the brief moment Sunder was blind was only when his eyeballs had been taken out. When he put them back in, he was able to see again. Perceptor in Transformer Cyberverse was blinded by an injury to the eyes, but he adapted instantly with no issues. He was also able to see certain things through his scope. This is therefore not the most realistic representation either. There are those who say that robots should not be disabled because they can get new parts like cars. I think that lacks imagination. There could be causes for why robots could stay permanently blind, deaf, mute, disabled, etc. What if the robot has a genetic issue and no attempt at replacement parts would work? What if the issue lies in the brain? What if it's psychologically caused? I think it is acceptable for there to be disabled robots and that people shouldn't groan that it would be boring. These robots may still fight or use weapons or otherwise have other crucial roles outside the battlefield. Everyone wants substance. A character can't be a full person unless there's more to them. Otherwise, that's when it's tokenism. Nightshade, for example, was not just a non-binary robot. They were the reader and the scientist of the group. We're looking here for mute characters that have a purpose to the story and depth to them, but who also show their unique lived experiences and show the speaking audience how to respectfully interact with them. Let's keep examining to see which character is the closest to what we're looking for. There are many other non-speaking Transformers you could think of, but as you think of them, ask yourself, how humanistic are they? Are they savage brutes who only appear to smash things up? That doesn't really mean they can't talk. Are they presented as really stupid? I can already think of some of the stupid minicons who don't speak or barely speak because they're presented as less human or bodish, you know what I mean. Mute people used to be referred to as dumb, but now we know that dumb would be offensive since it now means stupid. Kind of scary how English connected the inability to speak to stupidity. Next, ask, are the mute characters animal transformers? Of course, Laserbeak doesn't talk in Transformers Prime, but this fits with our expectations of how animals are. So how many characters do we really have who are intelligent and human-like, but just lack the ability to talk? Now enters one noteworthy character. Although I am far from a fan of Robots in Disguise 2015, there was one episode that caught my attention the first time I watched it. In episode 11 of season 4, Blastwave appears as a bounty hunter after the thief Nitra. Nitra pretends to be the bounty hunter herself, lying to her friend Strongarm that Blastwave is an escaped prisoner trying to kill her. Because the whole Autobot team believes this lie, they attack Blastwave the moment he bursts through a portal. Blastwave grunts and barks roughly, and the Autobots brush it off as regular brutish behavior. Sorry, I don't speak brute. Only at the end of the episode, when they capture Blastwave, they see his Autobot insignia, and Blastwave signs at them. Fortunately, Bumblebee knows Cybertronian sign language, perhaps learned before he was able to beep in Transformers Prime. They then understand that Blastwave was the good guy all along. I watched this episode with my friend, and she was quite impressed with this character and wished he had more screen time. His time is very brief for sure, since the episode mostly focuses on Nitra. He is also a one-time character who never appears again. We also recognize that the episode pushes things for the sake of plot, like how the Autobots never saw Blastwave's Autobot symbol until the very end, when the glare of light vanished so the audience could see the symbol too. Of course, the symbol would have always been visible, but that was plot convenience. Really, if the symbol had been in the usual insignia spots on Blastwave's chest, half the episode wouldn't have even happened. They also designed Blastwave to look scary, just so that the audience would believe longer that this was just a brutish Decepticon. My friend believed that Blastwave should have gestured more to his insignia to point out he wasn't the enemy of the Autobots but one of them. 
making Nitro the bad bot. Pointing at his Autobot symbol would have been far more helpful, or making any placating movements to encourage the Autobots to stop attacking him. My friend asserted that Blastwave's grunting was okay because after all, being mute doesn't mean incapable of all sounds. There are several causes for involuntary muteness, such as medical issues like in the throat or in the nervous system, and psychological issues like with trauma. For all we know, Blastwave could medically have difficulty producing sounds, and the grunts are the most he can manage. While Bumblebee believes that Blastwave's voice box was damaged in the war, it may not be the case. He doesn't know the guy. Cybertronian sign language? Oh, Scrud. He can't speak! His voice modulator must have been destroyed like mine was! I'm sure that the line was written because the story writers themselves don't have a broader understanding of the various causes of muteness. But we have to understand that muteness is not limited to a scar on the throat or the choice of a badass warrior. On a scale of 1 to 10, my friend rated the mute representation an 8 for Blastwave and would like to see more of him.